Hi, I'm Will Adams and this is Honeybrook Tools and Woodworks. This is the fourth video in a series that I'm doing in which I make a set of my tools from a single block of cherry. Uh, I had meant to get to this video last week, but life and work got in the way. So thus far I have made, I've cut the blanks for a set of winding sticks and those have been sitting for a couple of weeks so that they can acclimate after being cut. Um, I have, I've made the marking knife and I've made the dovetail knife. Today, I'm going to turn the handle for one of my plain iron adjusting hammers. So a couple months ago, I decided I wanted to invest in a metal lathe because I wanted to add these plain iron adjusting hammers um, to my list of, of, of tool offerings. At some point, I will do a video that is dedicated to both turning the head and the handle but for today's purposes I've already got the head turned and I'm really going to focus on the turning of the handle because um, this turning is a little bit trickier than some of my other handles in that uh, when it's done it's a it's a fairly thin spindle that makes up the handle so that poses a couple of challenges um, when I'm turning it so one of the things that I need to think about before I get going is, as you can see in this piece, there is a little bit of sapwood over here. And uh, sapwood is one of those things that uh, some people like it, some people don't. I actually had a request yesterday, somebody specifically requested a marking knife with in walnut that had some sapwood. Not everybody's like that, so I am going to err on the side of caution, and I'm going to rip this to size in a way that minimizes how much of the sapwood might be present in the finished handle. So I'm going to rip this down to size, and then we're going to go back over to the lathe. I'll get this chucked up, and we'll start turning. Let me move the camera. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my blank chucked up here in the lathe. Unlike the other two videos that I did in this series where it was more of a sit back and watch the turning process with very little commentary from me, I am going to stop on occasion and, and provide some comments about what I'm doing. And the reason for that is the first two videos in this series, the marking knife and the dovetail knife, I had already covered in detail in my playlist videos uh, about all my tools. I haven't filmed that video for this particular tool, and at some point I will do a complete video where I turn uh, or I machine the head and then turn the handle and, and mount it and so forth. For today's purposes, I'm going to focus on turning the handle, and uh, if time permits, I may actually mount the head too and, and film that. So, uh, I got my earplugs in and turn the dust extraction on and we'll get started.
So this is really uh, the first part that is a little bit fiddly. This is one of the, whoops, this is one of the uh, prototype hammers, hammer heads that I, I machined. And I use this as, as kind of a template or a gauge. Um, and just a, a commentary on the, on the tool itself. This is a finesse tool that's intended for, you know, micro adjustments of your, your plane iron. It's not meant to whack the back of a, a plane to loosen the wedge or to loosen the iron. So with that said, um, this hole in the hammerhead is, is three eighths of an inch in diameter. So I've got to get this turned down to that so that it's it fits snugly, but not too snugly. And it can't be, um, it obviously can't be too loose. So um, I'll stop a couple of times and check to see kind of where we are. Um, and before I get going again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this to um, eyeball where the, the end of the handle in terms of where it it fits the, the head where the end is going to be. So this will become more clear in just a second. So one thing that I should also mention, I could use a sizing tool for this uh, to, instead of the parting tool like I'm using, this one that I have set up right now, it, it won't go down uh, to the small diameter that I need. I did just pick up this vintage uh, Buck Brothers sizing tool, which as you can see, uh, would do the job, but I haven't I haven't fettled it yet and, and gotten it ready to go. So I'm just doing it the way, you know, I'm make, making do with the tools that are at my disposal. So that is still too tight here on the end. Uh, so we're gonna do a little bit more turning. So this is about exactly where I want it. it. It's too tight to go all the way down to where it's eventually going to sit, but I don't want it to get it to that final diameter yet because I'm likely going to have to do a little bit of sanding at the end and I don't want that to get too tight. So now this is um, where I'm going to measure 
uh, for the, the length of the handle. So from the bottom of the hammerhead to the end of the handle is nine and a half inches. I'm going to make a mark there. That's the very end. Um, so I want to go like there. Okay.
<clears throat> so, the part about this that, that can be fiddly, and it's not as fiddly today as it has been uh, with other handles that I've turned, because this is so thin, it can, it can get a little bit whippy. And then when you get those kind of the, the, the pressure of the tool against uh, the turning wood, uh, it can cause some vibrations and uh, some things that you just, you just don't want. This has not been as bad as uh, some handles that I've done, but I am going to need to do some, some sanding. I'm gonna finish uh, a little bit of work with the skew chisel and then I'm going to get this cleaned up. So. The reason that I'm using two hands here, it's, it's, I'm not trying to hide anything. It's this, this left hand is, I'm using it to just very gently provide some opposing force to the skew chisel so I don't get vibrations and whipping. For some reason, I, which I don't understand, it's, it feels a little bit more whippy up here than, than it usually does. But be that as it may, um, I'm going to just check this one more time just to see where we are. So let's see. That's right where I want it. So what I'm going to do, I am going to need to sand this a little bit. I'm just going to put a little pencil mark here to remind me not to or try not to go beyond that point. Now the hammerhead will get, I will cut a slot in here and it gets a brass wedge. So if it's, if it, if it gets a little bit loose and I, I even hesitate to say that the wedge will, will, um, cover for some sins, but I don't want to rely upon that. So I'm going to uh, get some abrasive paper and I'll be right back.
And there you have it. So, the next parts are to put the brass pin in the end, like I do on all my handles, and to mount the, the brass hammer head. So I'm gonna head over to the bench and I think uh, I've got time to, to do and film that. So let me move the camera, be right back. Back at the bench, the next thing I'm going to do is make a wedge out of brass for the hammerhead to be secured nice and, and firm to this handle. Uh, I use the same brass that I use for the wear strips in my marking gauges, so I inevitably have little remnants that are left over. I guess that was redundant. Um, that I can use for, for this purpose. I got this little wedge here, wedge, vise, and it's really simple. Just take a, a brass, a brass, man, my, the words aren't coming to me today. Take a file and file it into a wedge. there it is uh, now I just need to put it back into the vise and cut it down to size Okay, so there we are. Next, I need to cut the slot in the handle and I need to move the camera again and I'll show you how I do that. The next thing I need to do is to mark my center line so that I can then cut my slot. So I'm just gonna go into the vise here I want to make sure I've got the grain going where I want it to go. And then I'll just take this center finder on, the, on my small combination square. I'll come in here. 
score line. And then from there, what I want to do is I'm going to drill a small hole at the base of the slot so that it doesn't split out. That can be frustrating. Ask me how I know. So I'm just going to eyeball down here just a straight line down from that slot. That's going to help to guide me uh, when I, both when I cut the slot and right now when I drill this hole. So, it just needs to be a small hole, nothing. that okay so now back into the vise That's that. And I'm looking at this wedge now that I've cut that slot. And I think it's actually a little bit too thick there at its tip. So I'm going to take this over to the grinding wheel and just hit it real quick. And then I'll be back and show you how I mount this. Before we mount the head, I'm going to go ahead and install the, the brass end piece. Uh, it's just easier to do that now than to do it when the, the hammer head is on and risk scratching the hammer head. So,
Okay, so now I'm just gonna roughly file that. I'm not gonna file it to its finished state, but Okay, that's good for now. So now, let's see, we've got our hammerhead ready to go. I wanna make sure that this slot is parallel to the head. Okay. Then it's just a matter of driving it home. He said, one thing I need to do, I just wanna file these, these edges. Just makes it easier to get it headed in the right direction. Take two. Well, this being contrary. I might, that might need to be thinner yet. going to one side I'm not sure well, let me see the top is not Okay, so now the fun part, or the, the most fiddly part, and that is trimming all of this up. I haven't figured out a really elegant way to do it, other than just by taking my time, and um, I'll cut this off, uh, but then it's just a matter of some very delicate and careful file work. Uh, and inevitably, I'll need to do a little bit of sanding because inevitably I'm going to nick the head of the hammer. Um, but that's exactly where I want it. Okay, so let me gather a couple things together and then we will, um, I'll finish dressing this up. Be right back. So I think I told you that I was going to cut off the remnant part of the brass. I, I didn't. I, I went over to the bench grinder and just ground it down. Uh, it's more efficient and there's less risk of a hacksaw going somewhere where I don't want it to. So now 
as I mentioned before, there's really no easy way to do this. Certainly no quick way. It needs to go down further. There, you know, there are just some things that you just have to take your time, and this is one of them. Okay, so this is where we are now. Um, as you can see, there's some scratches there. It looks worse than it actually is. Uh, this happens every time I do one of these, but it's not a big deal. Um, I'm gonna hit this with some abrasive paper to get the worst of the scratches out. And then when I go to the buffing wheel, it will, um, it'll do everything I need it to do to get these out and it it'll look like a million bucks Sometimes things have to look worse before they get better. All right, I'm going to keep on with this and I'll pick up with you over at the buffing wheel in a couple minutes. Real quick, quickly before um, I move over to the, the buffing wheel, I just wanted to show you this. This is how it looks now. So that took about really only five minutes. I started with 320 grit and went up through 1200. And it, it really doesn't take long. So uh, we'll head over to the buffing wheel, get this buffed up and Man, we're, we're almost across the finish line. So let me move the camera, get set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, I changed my mind. So I'm not going to go over the buffing wheel. Uh, it occurred to me that before mounting this head, all of these hammerheads have already been buffed. I buffed them when I made them. So... Really, it would be a better use of my time and it would be far, far more efficient to just polish up this part that got a little bit dinged up in the process of, of filing down that, that wedge than it would to go over to the buffing wheel. So I've got these pads. They're in grits of, they start at 1500, go up to 12,000. And they do a great job. And this will take no time, really. And from here, as soon as I finish up with this, I will clean up the end of it where I put the, that little decorative pin. I need to sand that and get that finished off. 
And then it'll be time to stamp the maker's mark on it. And it'll need um, touch up to the to the shellac. Maybe a couple more layers just for the heck of it. And then wax and it'll be good. So I'm on 4,000 grit now. Six thousand. Eight thousand. The other advantage to doing this by hand that just occurred to me is when When I put the hammer on the buffing wheel with the hammer with the handle already installed, the buffing compound it will it'll turn this end grain really black and and ugly. There's uh, inevitably a little bit of discoloration just because you're sanding brass against the wood. But it's much better than had I gone over to the to the buffing wheel. Okay, so now the last part is this right here. So grab my files again. Actually, I don't want that one. So I'm going to keep on at this. Um, I, I file it and then I'll hit it with probably 600 grit. Yeah, feels like 600 grit will do what I need it to do. And then, whoops, uh, a very fine scotch bright pad followed by some four out steel wool. And then I'll put some shellac on all of the bottom here. So let me finish this up. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And then um, we'll get the maker's mark on it and we'll be finished. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're just about to uh, cross the finish line. I've got this sanded and cleaned up. And I put another quick coat of shellac on this. And now it's just time to put the maker's mark on it. So there we go. 
So before this goes out to a customer, I will, I'll polish up the top again and it, it still needs, um, still needs wax on the handle and probably another coat of shellac, but for all intents and purposes, this is finished. I hope you liked this video. If you did, I hope you'll click the like button down below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.